All right, guys, I want to talk about gun control, particularly this gun. This is an AR-15. Feels good in my hand. It's fun to shoot. No, seriously, though, this is a good gun. I love this gun. I carried one in Iraq. This gun has saved my life and has defended my property. Guys, right now, in the wake of another crisis, which the left, they won't let a crisis go to waste. We know that. They are out there pushing for gun control. And the left's favorite propagandist, Jimmy Kimmel, is being praised right now because he went on his show and did a little monologue about gun control where he put on the waterworks, more crocodile tears from Jimmy Crybaby Kimmel. And the left is praising him. They're promoting it on YouTube. And I want to debunk everything he had to say. You know, people like Jimmy Kimmel, people like Mayor Bloomberg, these people who push for gun control... These people don't care about dead children. They don't care about minorities. They don't care about immigrants. The left never care about these kind of things that they claim to champion. They care about power, and they care about pushing their agenda, which right now is something sort of a hybrid between Fabian socialism and full-blown socialism. And uh, you know what? They don't like these guns because they know that Americans who own these guns, they're the ones who are going to stand in their way from going full-blown Marxist. So, I want you guys to see what Jimmy Kimmel had to say, and then I'm going to wipe the floor with his butt and uh, debunk everything. Well, this is another very sad day in America, another senseless shooting, this time at a high school in uh, Parkland, Florida, where a gunman, a former student, opened fire yesterday. Again, 17 lives have been lost, more than a dozen people are hospitalized, and our president, as he should, weighed in on the tragic events this morning from the White House. We are... So there you see him getting a little emotional. His voice is trembling. You know, he's a good actor. Um, I'm going to skip ahead. He plays these clips of Trump, and then he says he agrees to try to soft-sell everything to the audience and make him seem less biased than he really is. So let me skip past this, and I'll get to the part where he starts saying his piece on gun control. Agreed. So I agree with both of those statements. And here's what you do to fix that. Tell your buddies in Congress, tell Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell and Marco Rubio, all the family men who care so much about their communities, that what we need are laws, real laws, that do everything possible to keep assault rifles out of the hands of people who are going to shoot our kids. Go on TV and tell them to do that. That's so what Jimmy Kimmel's doing here is offering an emotional argument with no substance. He cannot qualify what kind of policies he would put in place. And this is something the left do all the time. Jimmy Kimmel's here telling Trump and Congress to get off their butts because they're lazy, you know, the bad Republicans. Get off your butts and pass laws that are going to stop criminals and bad people from getting their hands on guns who are going to go out and murder our children. But Jimmy Kimmel can't tell you who those bad people are. Who are they? Who are these people? You see, here's the thing. Jimmy Kimmel, it would be one thing if he was talking about demographics because if you look at demographics you can sort of figure out who's most likely to go out and kill people. But if you told Jimmy Kimmel, look, let's pass a law that's going to stop black males between the ages of 15 and 30 from owning firearms, Jimmy Kimmel would call you a racist and start crying again. But statistically, that's the group that's most likely that commits the highest amount of violent crime. Now, a lot of other groups commit crime, yes, but that's the highest amount of violent crime for any demographic, so we can start with them. But that's not what Jimmy Kimmel wants. Let's watch some more. I think I'll tell you something. That is a perfect example of the common sense you told us you were going to bring to the White House. It's time to bring it. We need it. Tell these congressmen and lobbyists who infest that swamp you said you were going to drain, force these allegedly Christian men and women who stuff their pockets with money from the NRA year after year after year to do something now. So there's two things Jimmy Kimmel's doing here that really piss me off. One, he's doing something the left do all the time where they try and make all Christians look like hypocrites. And nobody's claiming that they're good Christians, okay? None of these politicians, at least. But the left act like if you're not walking on water and going out and healing the sick every day, then you're a bad Christian. What bothers me about that is they don't use that same logic towards Muslims. You know, if a Muslim's not going out and cutting off people's heads like Muhammad did or marrying child brides, are they bad Muslims? No. But the left act like that's the case with Christians. So, look, 
That's one thing. The second thing, though, that bothers me is that Jimmy Kimmel's acting like these politicians who take money from the NRA are all corrupt because they're stuffing their pockets with money. You know, here's the thing, guys. The NRA gives these people money, yes, but it's not going in their pockets. It's going in their campaign funds. And these are people we want in office because who funds the NRA? Well, millions of us do. People who want to protect our gun rights. And so, yes, we want them to give these politicians money. But I guarantee you that none of these politicians are putting that money in their pockets and walking out of the office with it. They're using it to run again so we know we'll have politicians who will protect our gun rights. Dare let anyone say it's too soon to be talking about it because he said it after Vegas, he said it after Sandy Hook, you say that after every one of these eight now fatal school shootings we had in this country this year. Children are being murdered. Something. We still haven't even talked about it. You still haven't done anything about it. nothing. You've literally done nothing. Actually, you've done worse than nothing. You like to say this is a mental health issue, but one of your very first acts as president, Mr. Trump, was to actually roll back the regulations that were designed to keep firearms out of the hands of the mentally ill. You did that. Your party voted to repeal the mandates on coverage for mental health. So I agree this is a mental illness issue because if you don't think we need to do something about it, you're obviously mentally ill. And so Sandy Hook did not happen under Trump's presidency and Las Vegas was too early in his presidency for him to have any involvement or any effect on that from happening. And Jimmy Kimmel knows this, but he knows his audience is so stupid they're not going to question this. Just like the woman who cried out in the middle of his monologue. I guarantee you that was staged. These things are so heavily choreographed and they're so theatrical because they know they're going to get a lot of views and a lot of retweets and they know it's about pushing an agenda. So they stage it. It's all theatrics. Um, what's really dangerous is Jimmy Kimmel trying to call the president mentally ill. And for what? Because he slashed up Obamacare? How would have Obamacare stopped this mass shooting? Here's the thing. I know you want to argue, oh, well, mental health care would have stopped it. No, mental health care has probably been the one factor that we know causes mass shootings. Guys, take it from me. I went to medical school. My wife's a doctor. I worked as a nurse in the army. The number one factor in all of these shootings, pretty much all of them, is SSRI drugs. There's a few that are terrorist related. And then there's the very rare one that's like a revenge killing or something. But the number one factor in pretty much all of these shootings is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. These are drugs that act on your brain's serotonin levels. And what they do is they boost your serotonin levels so high that make you feel this elevated feeling of, of joy and happiness. But what happens when your brain starts producing more chemicals than it normally does? Well, your brain gets out of whack. And so when it comes down off these drugs, you drop lower than you ever did under a normal metastatic rate. And this is very dangerous. These drugs are proven to cause homicidal thoughts, proven to cause suicidal tendencies. And every one of these shooters, like James Holmes, Adam Lanza, all of them were prescribed SSRI drugs. Very serious epidemic. So if anything, mental health care is causing these shootings. We need to go back to our roots, to families, taking care of each other, people being supportive, and people learning how to deal with life without these hugely emotional responses. And where we seeing more emotional responses. You know, if this kid, when he was growing up, had a two-parent family, and I know his family died, and it's sad, but if he had a two-parent family, if a lot of these other people had two-parent families that raised them right, where the father and mother spent time with them, we would not have these problems. But the left doesn't want to address the cultural issues because their whole ideology is built on destroying cultural norms. That's where cultural Marxism and critical theory come into play. Undermine all the values that build a strong middle class and a strong family. Because under Marxism, there is no family. There is no middle class. Anyway, just a thought. If one illegal immigrant causes a car accident, we've got to build a wall to keep the rest of them out. Why are you looking for solutions to that problem and not this one? Every so, one, owning a firearm in America, that's a constitutional right protected by our Second Amendment. 
being illegal and living in America is not. Why add to our problems? Two, Jimmy Kimmel is not only exploiting this tragedy to push a gun grabbing agenda, he is also using it to push open borders. And he's trying to slander Republicans saying that we want to kick out all illegals because they get a few car crashes. That's so dishonest. He's acting like MS-13 doesn't exist. Like illegals aren't committing murders every day. They commit far more murders than mass school shooters do. And we're not even adding the drug pipelines. When you talk about all the drugs that are crossing our southern border, if we build a wall, if Trump builds his wall, that will save far more lives, thousands, or maybe millions more lives than if we disarm a few people. And the fact is, is Jimmy Kimmel might argue that prohibition doesn't work. Building a wall won't stop the flow of drugs in America. Well, by that same logic, you won't stop the flow of guns either. And that's the problem. These people won't admit the one thing that will solve problems is people control. Not controlling guns, but controlling culture and the bad people who might enter this country illegally or the bad people already here. If leftists want to disarm people so bad, maybe they should start with those inner city areas that vote so heavily Democrat. That's where all the crime's happening. Go disarm Chicago first. But go ahead, I'll let you finish. To every parent, teacher, and child who is hurting so badly, we are here for you, whatever you need, whatever we can do to ease your pain. Great. Okay, what we need and what you can do to ease our pain and to prevent future pain is something. Eight out of ten Americans agree that a teenager shouldn't have an AR-15. So why does a teenager legally have an AR-15? Somewhere along the line, these guys forgot they work for us, not the NRA. Us. And this time, we're not going to allow you to bow your head in prayer for two weeks. All right. Of course teenagers should be allowed to own guns. I owned a gun when I was a teenager. Hell, I joined the army at 18. I carried an M16 around everywhere. A bunch of us teenagers did. And there were no mass shootings. Fully automatic rifles, machine guns. No problem. Because those men had fortitude. When I was in high school, we were able to carry guns in our cars. When my dad was in high school, people carried guns in the school. You know, it wasn't a big deal. Everybody had a gun in the back of their pickup truck on a gun rack. Nowadays, somebody sees that in school, they call the police, and that person goes to jail for 20 years, and that gun-free zone becomes less safe. But here's the bigger deal, right? He says Trump is doing nothing. Well, God, I pray Trump continues to do nothing. See this? I won't even give you this one little bullet right here. Not for anything. Because you know why? I've lived in countries where there's gun control. In fact, when you look at every statistic on gun ownership, Countries with the highest legal level of gun ownership are the safest. Countries with the highest level of illegal gun ownership and the lowest level of legal gun ownership, those are the most dangerous. And my wife and I lived in El Salvador. And for God's sakes, I own this rifle right here to make sure that this country never becomes like that one. That country was ransacked by people like Jimmy Kimmel, leftists who empowered criminals, who disarmed the public, and now people live like victims. They live behind huge... Cement walls, sheet metal doors, and barbed wire fences. Because an empowered criminal element in that country holds that country hostage. While people stay in their homes disarmed and afraid. Communism has wrecked that country. And you know what? I'll be damned, and I'm sure a lot of Americans will be damned with me, if they're ever going to let communism come to this country. For God's sakes, guys. Everybody go out and buy 20 guns if you can tonight. Go out and buy 50 guns. Hell, we need to put Smith & Wesson uh, working so hard to build more guns that they won't know what to do. I'm out, guys.